If you're trying to figure out the SSI payment date for December 2023, this video is for you. I'm going to give you the exact date that your payment is going to hit your bank account. Also, it is a double payment month in December 2023. So I'm going to give you the date when your second payment is going to come in. Also, you want to stay till the end of this video. I have an important announcement. About 1 million people on Social Security and Disability Benefits are at risk of getting their benefits suspended due to overpayment. That is according to a recent 60 Minutes episode that was just recently aired. And if you are affected or you are at risk of being denied or your benefits being suspended, I want to make sure that you know exactly what you need to do when you get that letter from the Social Security Administration. So let's get right into it. So the biggest thing I want to cover is your SSI checks and where you're going to get it. And then, as I mentioned, it's a double payment month. So you're going to receive two benefits, one at the beginning of the month, one at the end of the month, and I'm going to give you those dates. And then I'm going to cover this important story about 60 minutes, about 1 million people at risk of getting their benefits suspended because of receiving more money than they deserve. So if you are new to this channel, if you are new to Social Security Edge, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel because our entire mission is to bring you the latest news and updates Anything in and out of Congress that may affect your Social Security disability benefits, we will bring it to you and we want you to be the first to know. So let's get right into it. So the first thing I want to do is give you a quick update on COLA. So we recorded a video recently talking about your COLA for 2024. It was a very tiny increase. It was 3.2% and a lot of you were disappointed by that. But I want to give you the specific amount that you're going to receive starting in January. But one thing you need to note is that even though the COLA was 3.2% and it's been higher the last two years because of record inflation, it was, tw you know, 2022 it was 5.9%, in 2023 it was 8.7%, it was 3.2%, you know, because inflation is coming down. But if you look at the average COLA rate for the last 20 years, it's been 2.6%. So 3.2% may not be big but it's actually higher than the average for the last 20 years. I know you will say, well, you don't feel it in your pocket because prices have gone up and stayed up. Food is expensive. Transportation is expensive. Everything is expensive. I hear you. But what I'm saying is that if you just look at the numbers, the average COLA for the last 20 years has been 2.6%. So what does that mean for you? Well, currently, the minimum or the, the, the average benefit amount for SSI that everybody gets, which means that the, the you know what the Social Security Administration has calculated for SSI benefits is nine hundred and fourteen dollars a month. If you're a couple, you're getting one thousand three hundred and seventy one dollars. Your resource limit has always been two thousand for a while now, which I'm going to talk about in a second. So next year, starting in January, you're going to get nine hundred and forty three dollars, a tiny increase because of the cola increase that was so small. So you're going to go from 914 to 943 and then as a couple you're going to go from 1371 to 1415 dollars. The resources limit is going to remain the same at 2000 for an individual, 3000 per couple. Now stay till the end for this overpayment issue because a lot of the reason why people are getting this overpayment is because of the resource limit. You either have more money in your bank account than you should or you've been working you know, trial to work program and you're not reporting your wages correctly or you've received all of a sudden some sudden increase in your financial resources that you haven't reported to the Social Security Administration and so people are having their benefits suspended because of that. So stay tuned for that. So let's talk about your payment schedule. As you know, Social Security SSI benefits are paid on the first of each month and if you receive both SSI and Social Security, you get your benefits on the third of each month. All these dates are true unless your benefit falls on a weekend or your benefit date falls on a holiday, at which point you will be paid the day before. So what does this mean? What does this look like when it comes to your benefits? Well, for December, because Friday, December 1st is a business day and not a holiday, you're going to get your benefits on time. So SSI benefits will be paid on December 1st. Now, if you receive both SSI and Social Security, you're going to get your benefits on December 1st also because December the 3rd, when you should have received your benefit, is a Sunday. And as I mentioned, 
if the benefit date falls on a Sunday or a holiday, you're going to get your benefits the day before. So all SSI benefits for December are going to come in on December 1st for, for this month. Then the second payment is going to come in on Friday, the December 29th. Why? Because that is your January payment coming in early. January 1st is a holiday, New Year's Day. So the, 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 the bank is not going to be open. Your benefits are not going to be sent on January 1st. So as I mentioned, if it's a holiday, it's going to fall the day before, the business day before, which happens to be Friday, December 29th, right before the end of the year. So those are the two payment dates for SSI, December 1st and December the 29th. Now, if you're on both SSI and Social Security, you will get your January payment on time. So let's look at what January looks like. Because you received your Social Security SSI benefits in, on December the 29th, there will be no SSI benefit payments in January. So if you only receive SSI benefits, there will be no January payment because you got your payment on December 29th. If you are receiving both SSI and Social Security, your January payment will come in on the 3rd because January 3rd is a Wednesday, it's a weekday, and so it will come in on time. So that is about benefits. Now, what happens if you did not receive your benefits? I've been talking about overpayment, people's benefits being canceled, suspended. Here is what you need to do if your benefits don't come in. The first thing is wait for three days. That is the recommendation from the Social Security Administration so that you give it enough time for your benefits to come in. Sometimes it's a delay from your bank. It may also be a technical issue. So three additional business days. If you don't get your benefits after that, call the Social Security Administration or visit a local office to find out what's going on. You can call them at 1-800-772-1213. You can also log in online. If you've created a My Social Security account, you can log in online to find out what's going on. It may be an overpayment or a cancellation. You may have violated a Social Security rule so egregious that they cancel your benefits. Or you may be getting more money than you deserve and they are holding your payments to use it to cover, to claw back the overpayment amount that you owe. So now let's get to the big story I wanted to talk about regarding 60 Minutes episode. So 60 Minutes did an episode recently talking about social security benefits at risk for 1 million people because of overpayments. And Anderson Cooper of CNN did an excellent job of explaining this issue. I want to summarize it for you so that you'll know what this is about, whether you're at risk, and what you need to do. Most importantly, if you receive one of these 1 million letters from the Social Security Administration, what exactly you need to do. So the title alone of this episode is really, really, really disturbing. Our mistake is your responsibility. Essentially saying that the Social Security Administration in some of these overpayment cases have made a mistake and they are pushing it on beneficiaries. So let's dive right into it. So 71 million Americans are on Social Security and disability. Each year, 1 million get a letter about overpayments, which means that the Social Security Administration has determined that they've sent you more money than you were eligible for. And sometimes it's due to miscalculation by the Social Security Administration. And so they send you a letter and this puts people in debt, record debt, that they didn't even know was happening. And then all of a sudden they get hit with a letter and they have 30 days to pay the money back. Or they face consequences, which I'm going to talk about. So 60 Minutes highlighted three stories which I'm going to share with you. The first one is the story of Stephen and Becky Sword. So here is the detail of what happened with them. So they live in Chicago and they got a letter from the Social Security Administration that they owe $51,887 and they have 30 days to pay it. You heard that right. 30 days to pay $51,000. Now, here's what happened. They're both in their 60s and their husband, Stephen, got on disability benefits because of an illness. And he was also working while on disability, which is allowed. You can get on trial to work program if you're able to work a little bit. But when you're working while you're on disability, you're supposed to be reporting your earnings information to Social Security every month so that your benefits will be adjusted accordingly. 
they said they've been doing that diligently and they have receipts to show they faxed everything to the Social Security Administration on time. Unbeknownst to them, the Social Security Administration hadn't done anything with their records. All the employment information, the pay information they sent, nothing was done. And then they get hit with this letter. 30 days to pay 51887 So... This caused them a lot of stress because they were not aware this was happening. And now they are afraid that they're going to lose their home because they don't have the money to be able to pay this money back. So what happened here? Well, the Social Security Administration denied their request for an appeal. They filed for a waiver, which is that you are asking the Social Security Administration to forgive your debt, the waiver was denied. So they had no option but to, oh, they were about to give up their life savings. They only have $60,000 left. They're in their 60s. They only have $60,000 in savings. They were about to give that all back to the Social Security Administration to deal with this issue because it's been causing them a lot of stress. So there's an update on their story I'm going to give you at the end. The second story is of Jean and Glenn. Now, here's what happened. Jean started collecting Social Security six years ago. What happened was that the Social Security Administration made a mistake in calculating her benefits. So, unbeknownst to her, for four years, she received $72,000 more than she should. So, now the Social Security Administration sent her a bill. She has 30 days to pay it. Of course, she didn't have... 72000 sitting around to pay, to pay that money back. So what did they do? They cut her benefits off. For two years now, she has not received a single Social Security check. Again, she appealed. She asked for a waiver. Nothing. All of it was denied. The third story about somebody on disability is even more bizarre. The story of Roy Farmer. Roy is was on social security disability when he was a child. He was diagnosed with cerebral palsy and was receiving disability benefits. His mom was receiving benefits to take care of him. When he was 11, the social security administration realized that they were paying him more. Obviously, they said he was he's gotten better, so they stopped sending him benefits. But... They said that they sent him $4,900 more than he deserved. So that was when he was 11. His mom has since passed away. Now he's an adult. He's working. He's in his 20s. And now the Social Security Administration want the money back from him. Money that they paid him while he was a child, receiving disability benefits. The $4,900 they want it back now because they've determined that he's working now and he can pay the money back. So that is the third story. So what is behind all this? Obviously, the Social Security Administration, there's a reason why they're getting aggressive in getting all this back. Well, the reason is that there's $21.6 billion in overpayment that they're trying to claw back. And how are they doing that? Putting a lot of stress on people on disability and Social Security, some of whom did not know that they were receiving money they shouldn't have received. And some of it is the Social Security Administration's own fault. Because there's also a lack of accountability on the part of the Social Security Administration and because people don't have powerful people advocating for them, appeals are denied in record numbers, waivers are rarely granted, so people are burdened with this issue. So if you receive an overpayment letter from the Social Security Administration, there are three things you can do and I'm going to walk you through it. The first one is you can fight, file an appeal. You have to file an appeal within 30 days of receiving the letter. They will give you 60 days. But here's why you need to do it in 30 days. Because in 30 days, if they receive your appeal request, they cannot do any collection efforts. They cannot hold your benefits or cancel your benefits or take a portion of it until they've made a decision on your appeal. But they have to get that appeal by law within 30 days to be able to do that. And then the next option, if your appeal is denied, is to file for a waiver. A waiver is just saying that you're telling them you cannot make this payment and if they take your social security benefits or a portion of it or all of it 
or garnish some of it is going to cause you financial issues. That is going to severely affect the way you're going to live. So that is a waiver. If your waiver is denied, then the third option, obviously the first option is if you have the money, you pay it. So that's option number one. Number two is appeal. Number three is a waiver. If all these are not, does not resolve your issue, then you can also request a hearing before an administrative judge, a social security administrative judge. This is a legal proceeding, so you probably want to get an attorney to go with you and prepare your case so that you can give yourself a good fighting chance of being able to beat this. And the administrative judge will then determine whether you have a case or not. So the three options available to you is to pay the money back if you have it or set up a payment plan with the Social Security Administration, appeal or request a waiver. And if all else fails, get a hearing before a judge. This is also compounded. This issue of overpayment is compounded because the Social Security Administration is severely understaffed. There's record number of people receiving Social Security and disability benefits, but then less people, a record number of people are receiving benefits, but the staffing level at the Social Security Administration is at an all-time low. So more people be getting benefits, less people working at Social Security. That is a recipe for a lot of disaster. So these cases are not getting the time of day they deserve, and a lot of people are not getting the attention they deserve from the Social Security Administration. So... A lot of experts are frustrated with this process and are re requesting that the Social Security Administration make changes about how it does overpayments. Number one, they want a study of limitation. Why are they waiting for years and years and then sending people letters to pay $50,000, $70,000, $80,000? I've seen something where somebody owed $120,000 in benefits for collecting overpayments for years. There should be some statute of limitation where after the Social Security Administration, you know, sees something and they haven't acted on it for a while, then you don't have to pay. And then also they need to restructure how they do these overpayments, how they collect money from people, because it can cost severe. Four out of 10 seniors only rely on Social Security benefits as their only source of income. And then people on disability obviously are not working or are working very little. They don't have that kind of money sitting around because... If you're on SSI, you have asset limits. So you need to keep your assets under $2,000 to continue to receive SSI benefits. But yet the Social Security Administration is comfortable sending you a letter that you owe $70,000 or you owe $5,000 when they have put you under an asset limit of $2,000 to be able to receive benefits. So it just does not make sense to be putting this kind of pressure on people. So... But the Social Administration has been very aggressive. This is the amount they've collected over the years in overpayments. 2022, they collected $3.354 billion, and they still have $21.6 billion left to collect. They say they are doing this because the Social Security Trust Fund is in trouble. It's going to be depleted around 2035. They are trying to help get the government collect whatever money it's owed them. And that's a good effort. But... This is not going to solve the Social Security Trust Fund issue. It's a bigger problem than overpayments. Congress and the president need to come up with a plan, which they have done. I've, I've done videos about the president's plan for Social Security, to be how he wants to fix Social Security and disability, and the Republicans, what their plan is. So check out our video library. There's detailed plans there. But that is the solution. Putting pressure on people who are vulnerable to pay money they don't have is not the way to fix Social Security's shortfall or the problem Social Security is experiencing. So here is the interesting side of this story from 60 Minutes. And it shows you the power of the media and the power of how government agencies feel pressure when they are in the news. Because 60 Minutes covered these three people, Remember, I told you they've applied for a waiver. They've applied for the death to be forgiven. They've appealed. All were denied. But because they were on 60 Minutes and were featured on 60 Minutes and the Social Security Administration felt pressure from 60 Minutes episode, all of a sudden, they have a change of mind. So all three people's debt were finally forgiven. The Social Security Administration says that they don't have to pay it anymore. Isn't that surprising? Isn't that interesting? How about the 1 million people that have been getting letters 
that they owe money? Are their debt also going to be forgiven? Is it because they don't have powerful people backing them or highlighting their story or sharing their story? So they are stuck with debt, mountain debt that they cannot pay. But people who were featured on TV, national television, get their debt wiped off. So that is a wrinkle to that story. So that is the overpayment story I wanted to bring you. If you have any questions at all, you can ask in the comment section below. If you are new to this channel, you like what you hear, you like what we're doing, please subscribe. It helps us a lot to grow this channel and bring you more stories like this. So until I see you in the next video, thank you for watching.